All right, guys. Good, good evening. Good night. Good morning. Whatever time it may be for you guys. Um, y'all peep, peep the awesome Nike headband my girl got for me. Um, kind of need a headband just cause like my hair gets in my face all the time. You know? Yo, so um, this little little question and answer, I suppose, or comment, comment and um, comment and retort, I suppose. Going through my YouTube, uh, my YouTube comments, I'm just gonna be going through and answering some of the stuff that y'all sent to me. So here we go. Starting off at the very top from TikTok Trends. Wow, just 53 minutes ago. Here we go. He says, "I want to ask you. I am a five nine man. Yo, great height by the way. I am also five nine. <laughs> at what weight do you think my body will start to look big and look like I lift as a natural as a natural bodybuilder?" Um, I suppose that's a little bit of a uh, little multi-step question. Um, it's going to depend on a few factors, right? It's going to depend on your uh, on your body fat percentage. It's going to depend on your uh, the muscle belly, your your genetics for your muscle bellies, right? So uh, a lot of the times, if your if your bicep if your bicep tendon attaches closer down to your elbow, you can you can kind of achieve the look of a fuller bicep without it really being larger. But if you're God, what am I doing? <laughs> if you're unlucky and your bicep tendon is further up your arm, then you can get like a nicer peak. You can get like a nicer peak, but your arm won't look as full with the same amount of muscle, if you get what I'm saying. And then, um, and it's also kind of the same. It's this pretty much the sim similar for a lot of other body parts. It depends on your genetics. But just throwing a uh, random, a, a, a solid number out there. I think, um... It also depends where your where the weight is distributed in your body. You know, if you got thick legs, you know, if your legs are, if you got genetically large legs, then you might need to weigh a little bit more for the rest of your body to look like you actually lift. But I would I would say um, I would say if you get down, if you get if you're at a body percentage where you can see where you, where you have visible abs at five nine, and your weight is pretty evenly distributed between your legs and your upper body, you're not too predominantly heavy. In lower or upper, now I would say um, this is tough. Maybe one seventy or one eighty. Um, again, I say it's tough just because, like looking back on it, I always thought I was kind of big, but then again, I was like one seventy, one eighty, and here I am now at two ten. Looking back on it, I look kind of small. But um, final answer, I would say between one seventy to one eighty. If you want to, uh, if you want to achieve a large look, I'll definitely, definitely develop, definitely develop your deltoids, your chest, traps, forearms. Yeah, and the rest will just fall in, you know. Yo, great question, great question. Keep sending me those questions, TikTok trends, because I always answer you. I got you. Um, if I didn't answer it all the way, leave another comment and have me explain a little bit more. I got you. Yo, my information, my information is free for you guys. Um, next one, uh, <laughs> that's not really a question, um, this, this person says something is really cute about your facial expressions, Duke, haha, -ha. laughing face, laughing face, keep it up, yo, I'm gonna try to keep it up, right, um, I definitely, I do not, I am not this energetic and this, like, expressive throughout my entire day, I try to put a little bit more effort into my face cam videos for you guys, because, like, that's the point of a face cam video, y'all wanna see my facial expressions, y'all wanna see, you want to see me, so I want to put a little bit more effort into that, so y'all can enjoy it. Let me turn this brightness up, so I feel like it's kind of dim. Ah, perfect. There we go. Um, next one was from. Oh, okay, all right, here we go. Um, next one is from. Oh gosh, I might mispronounce this. Uh, Ab Abdel Abdel M. Um, he's. Uh, they're asking, is there techniques slash tricks to grow chest fullness and width as well? And how many times to hit in a week, and what exercises? Fantastic question. All these comments and questions are fantastic, of course. Um, techniques or tricks? Mm, I don't think I could hammer down any particular technique or trick. If I had to select one, I would say um, reps past failure, right? Any type of intensity uh, technique. So, um, you know, say... Say you're doing a set of uh, a set of chest uh, cable chest flies, right? And you, you do your last set and you can't do any more, 
right, with that particular weight. So drop that weight down maybe 10 or 20 percent, and then do as many reps as you can with that. And that's a great technique to get any to get additional um, additional muscle overload, additional muscle nuclei uh, stimulus in there. You know, the the stimulus that you put on your muscles it was, is what causes them to tear down. The nutrients that you give your muscles it, is what causes them to regrow. And then the time that you take to rest is the time that it takes for your muscles to regrow stronger. Um, let's see, fullness and width. Yo, unfortunately, or yo, width width will come down to where your 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 pec tendon attaches into your into your shoulder girdle around here. So some people just have have better genetics for it to attach further into your shoulder girdle. Some people have a little worse genetics for it to attach lower, but. Either way, if you if you, if you really honestly you train your ass off, train your butt off, and your chest is gonna look fantastic either way. Whether you got whether where wherever the heck your tendons attach, you put the work in, it's you're gonna look great. I promise you. Um, let's see, fullness. I would definitely prioritize inclined inclined pressing movements, heavy inclined pressing movements for as many reps as you can, keeping the rep ranges from eight. To 15 right incline the reason I say incline is just because they they say from from my understanding from what I've learned you can't necessarily isolate the you know the different parts of the pec but from my personal experience and from the people that I've trained and the progress that I've seen in them when we when I focus on incline movements you really you really get that that upper shelf that upper shelf in your chest really does develop a lot more when you try to focus on some type of incline press movement or incline fly movement so i definitely prioritize that i know a lot of times in the gym i see people start with flat bench press they do heavy heavy flat bench press and then they do incline dumbbell press and then they do chest flies and that's their chest workout um oh so moving on to your next question actually how many times a hit in a week depends on your training split um, well, if you're isolating strictly chest and you're only doing chest on a particular day, then, uh, and you're not doing like a push-pull workout, and you're not doing like deltoids, triceps, and chest, if you're just doing strictly chest, then I would say, um, I would say maybe twice a week if you're hitting it really hard, and maybe three times a week if you're doing a push-pull legs split. Yeah, so, I, so I, anywhere in the range, I would say two to three times. But everybody's different. depends depends on your diet and how 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 much of rest you get. If your diet's garbage, then your muscles are going to take a lot longer to recover. And you will notice that as you as you progress in the years, you'll see that on days that eat like garbage, the next day in the gym you're not going to feel as good. Your muscles are not going to have the nutrients that they need to recover. Um, so what exercises? Right. Last part of this question. I personally, I would like to see everybody start. Always start with a warm up, right? I like to do me personally. I would always start the start a workout with some type of cardio warm up, something to get your blood going, to get the, all your blood pumped through all the parts of your body, and then you're gonna warm warm up the uh, the muscles that you're gonna be using in the workout, and then the antagonist muscles that you're gonna be using. So pretty much a, like it's kind of like a full body warm up, right? So if your focus is chest that day, then I would warm up your rear delts, and maybe even your lats, right? Because they, your rear delts and your lats and your back here are the antagonist muscles in your chest workout. They help, they help stabilize a lot of your pressing movements. And then warm up your chest, right? Always, warm, always try to warm up, right? Get as much blood into that muscle as you can before you start working out. Helps reduce injury. Uh, helps you perform a little bit better. And then exercise. A, uh, I would prioritize, I already said, I would prioritize incline pressing. And then uh, isolation chest movements. Cable flies, machine flies, uh, dumbbell flies. I, I, you know, some 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 fitness gurus don't like to include dumbbell. Like they, they say dumbbell flies are not good for you, but uh, you know, just just gauge gauge your own <laughs> gauge your own capacity for what you can handle. If you do too much weight on a dumbbell fly, then yeah, you definitely risk shoulder injury, bicep injury, tears, and all this other stuff. But if you do it. In a smart way with the weight that you can handle, it's just as effective. Yeah, okay, no, it's not necessarily as effective, but you can you can get a pretty good stretch at the bottom. Then once you raise up, once you raise up and you get to a certain point where the weight's not coming, uh, where the gravity's not pulling the weight straight down against the the fibers of your chest muscles, then you're not really getting the contraction. 
So like once you get up to like, wow, maybe, maybe like a 60 degree angle, gravity's no longer pulled down on your chest fibers. So once you get above your chest, there's, your chest isn't working anymore, so you're losing that tension. So I guess I would not recommend dumbbell chest flies. <laughs> Cable flies, machine flies. Isolation. Incline, incline movement, isolation, and then maybe some type of flat or decline pressing movement. Again, if I answered everything, fantastic. If I didn't answer everything, you got more questions, just hit me up. Um, next one comes from I'm Just Saying. By the way, I love your name. I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan. <laughs> uh, I have a question, Duke. What do you think about combining two sports together, like bodybuilding and boxing, for example? Would that cause muscle loss? Ooh, goodness. Oh, man. All these questions never have a straightforward answer. There's always a lot of information that goes into these questions, or goes into these answers, I suppose. Um, it depends on your goals, you know? If you want to be an IFBB Pro competitive bodybuilder, then I would, I would not suggest mixing two sports. If you want to be a pro boxer, I would not suggest mixing two sports. If you're just looking for, for mental health and physical health and wellness, then hell, absolutely, absolutely mix boxing and bodybuilding. It's crazy. It's like this. It's like this dude is in my gym or something. Cause um, uh, I used, I used to box. I used to box actually. For okay, all right. Oh, let's not get into it. So, okay, I, I started when I was eight, and I stopped when I was twelve. So I boxed for four years of my life when I was a little little kid. Okay, so it don't mean anything, right? <laughs> but but I do find I do find hitting the heavy bag and throwing combos, and doing full work and stuff like that to be a really fun form of cardio. Right? It gives me a nice break from working out. It gives me another outlet to vent any type of anger or emotions or just helps me vent energy, you know? So it uh, depends on your goals, right? If you're looking to be the best at something, then prioritize that one thing. If you want to be the best at bodybuilding, prioritize bodybuilding. If you want to be the best boxer, prioritize boxing. If you want to do both, then, you know, <laughs> give it your best shot. You'll be surprised at what you can achieve. If you want to be an IFBB pro and a pro boxer, give it a shot, but I would not recommend it because you know, bodybuilding, even though some bodybuilders do do off-season stuff, the best bodybuilders, to them, it is a complete lifestyle. It is a year-round thing, right? To the best boxers, is is not just prepping for fights, having a fight, and then taking time off, right? For them, boxing is a lifestyle, year-round. So my answer would be prioritize one or the other if you want to be the best. If it's just health and wellness, then absolutely go for it, 100%. <sighs> Let's see, I do wanna put up some boxing vids, by the way, just me hitting the heavy bag. I feel like I put a little bit of power into that thing. Let's see. Um, we're gonna go through, uh, we're gonna go through a couple more too. Yeah, a couple more, this is for 13 minutes. Um, says one of the, uh, this one comes from Cool Like Dad. See, yeah, I'm terrible, good Lord. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce your name, man. I am so sorry. Good Lord. Send me hate comments, please. Uh, one of these days, could you explain what exercises do you do to make your chest full all over? I have, tr I have trouble trying to hit my underboobs, but yours is crazy muscular all around. Or crazy muscular all around, right? Um, so, once again, coming back to chest exercises. It's funny because if you already watch one of my other one of my latest videos, then you would see that my chest was at the top of the list for one of, one of those lists. Um, you know, it's really I don't see much. There's not a lot of there's not too much evidence to really prove that different angles of motion will isolate different sections of the chest. However, like I said before, I do see a huge improvement in the upper shelf right here when I do incline movements. And with that said, I also see a huge improvement in the, you know, like the shape of under right there when I do when I do decline movements. So what I would suggest for that is the first part of your question, chest, full chest, chest full all over, right? Would be combining, would be Focusing on all, all three of the variations, right? Upper, isolation, 
and then some type of neutral or decline movement. When I say isolation, I mean really focusing, right? So the purpose of the chest, right? The purpose of your pec muscle is to move, oh, I'm terrible, <laughs> is to move your elbow from, from, from out here, from your side to in front of you, right? So when I say isolation, I mean strictly using that range of motion, right? So not involving your tricep, not involving your front delt in any type of pressing motion, strictly just some type of fly, right? So, so incline would be obviously some type of press like this, right? When I say isolation, I'm talking about something that strictly uses your pec muscle. And then decline or neutral would be some type of flat bench or some type of like decline dip or even like some of the chest press machines or like a decline bench. That's what I would suggest to have a full chest all over. Specifically trying to work on your under boob, then I would prioritize more of some decline chest flies and some deep and some flat uh, decline bench or even dips. Chest uh, dips when you have a certain when you angle your your torso more it's par more parallel to the ground. You hit a little bit more of your chest strictly just because of the way your elbows are moving. All right, moving on. Same co comment from the same dude. He says, "Yeah, some people put too many edits." I like people that are real and get to know people out there. It is going to be slower, but I get what you're saying with building your brand and your content. 100%. Uh, this is one of the video when I was talking about how with my channel throughout <laughs> throughout my process of growing in this stuff, I don't want to have a whole bunch of cuts. I don't want to have a whole bunch of diagrams and like sound effects and like text on screen and all this like fancy stuff and like a lot of time in editing just because... I don't know. I guess just because I want to show you guys that anybody can do this. Anybody can, anybody can do this. You don't need to spend hundreds of dollars on computer programs. You don't need to spend hours and hours behind a laptop editing things down. Super special. You have you bring you bring a personality. You bring some content, and you can build you can build a fan base. And what he's talking about with uh, going to be slower, but I get what you're saying when you're building your fan base is that the people that subscribe, the people that watch me. They come here to watch me and my personality. They they care about what I have to say. They care about my input, and they're investing in me. And I invest in y'all by giving y'all my information. So it's awesome. Here we go. This would be the last. Well, actually, let me see. Okay, okay. We'll do two more. Do two more. Um, next up from J and C. I don't know if I touched on this already, but <laughs> we're gonna see the first part of the comment. He asked me, uh, he said, you ever buzz your hair? Thank you for the compliment, by the way. But he says, you ever buzz your hair? I bet you look great with your hair super short. Um, I don't know. Did I already say, did I talk about this? I think I already talked about this. But yeah, I did use to buzz my hair. Uh, two, I thought I looked great. Three, some people thought I looked not great. <laughs> but, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, like I said before. Um, you should do what you want to do in life. You should try not to care so much about what other people think or what other people want you to do. Find what makes you happy. You try to do that as best as you can. Without, as long as it doesn't hurt other people, you should do what you want. I've always held that belief. All right, y'all. Last question. Last or la yeah, last question. Here we go. It's from TikTok Trends again. I love this guy. Always comes with great questions, great ideas for content. Here we go. Last one. To wrap it up. <sighs> I am out of breath. Uh, have you dated a married woman before? Talk to us about some of your experiences and weird stories. It's clearly you have a lot of interesting stories to tell, man. LOL. Laughing emoji. Um, yeah, and then I commented below that I really am a terrible storyteller. I don't really know how to deliver a punchline effectively to like, I don't know, and all, <laughs> I don't know how to deliver a punchline effectively. And then on top of that, I feel like a lot of times I rant. And sometimes I feel like the tone of my voice and my lack of ability to fluctuate in like the, uh, I don't know what the word is called, but like, you know, some people will put a lot of emphasis on a word and then like kind of tone it back and then put a lot of emphasis on another word. I feel like I don't really do that as much. And I could probably practice and get better at that. So maybe that's something I'll try. So, but that's why I feel like I'm not really good at telling stories. Um, on top of that, moving backwards, um, huh, weird stories. I'd have to stop and think about it. I feel like I definitely do, but I just have to brainstorm some. Everybody's got weird and crazy stories to tell. It just depends on how you translate the story, how you get it across, you know, how you tell it. <sighs> and then lastly, have I ever ever dared date? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> have I ever dated a married woman before? No, I have never dated a married woman. Um, in fact, crazily enough, I've only ever dated two women. 
<laughs> so um, I, would, I guess if you ever take dating advice from me, take it with a grain of salt because when it comes to relationships, I would say my experience is uh, pretty low with relationships. Now, um, uh, with like long-term meaningful relationships, I suppose, like casual, silly, childish relationships, I would say I have way more experience than I should. But yeah, guys, you know what? That's going to wrap up the video. It's about 20 minutes in. That is a long comment and retort video. But if you made it this far, please drop a like. Guys, at the time of making this, let me see, actually. Let me see. At the time of making this video, I have 45 subscribers and over 1,500 views on my channel. Not 1,500 views on a video, 1,500 views total on my channel, and that still makes me super excited that I see this thing growing each and every day. Every time I put up a video, it gets views, it grows. I love it. I love you guys. Um, drop a like. Drop a comment. What you got? What, what, what you want to see next? Of course, I'm an open book. Um, if you haven't, been, if you have not been watching my Spider-Man Miles Morales PlayStation 4 playthrough, you gotta give it a look, right? It's um, it's a lot of fun. If you don't even really want to watch it, it's something great that you can put on in the background and just listen to while you're doing laundry, brushing your teeth, or doing homework, or whatever, you know? But thank you so much for watching. Stay safe. And, um, yeah, stay tuned for the next one.